Welcome to Nerd Sports. It's come to our attention that we need to put a disclaimer of sorts at the beginning of our episodes, so here we go. If you're driving over the road, sitting at work in the office, working from home, or just casually going about your day listening to the podcast either on Spotify or Apple Podcast, and the dulcet tones of our voices elicit certain reactions like male or female boners that last for four hours or more, you're welcome. And now, Nerd Sports. Welcome to Nerd Sports. Today, <laughs> we're going to talk about my favorite subject, SummerSlam. That was this weekend. Yes, it was. Yeah, that was in John Cena. He came back. And he came so back. Did, uh, and Brock Lesnar. Yeah, John Cena, from my understanding, got his ass kicked. Yeah, he he got his he got his ass kicked pretty bad. Good, that's what he gets for bowing down to but, China. But uh, the other notable thing that actually happened this weekend was they actually had the winning wrestlers that won gold in the male and the female in the Olympics on the show. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, first woman U.S. Olympic uh, winning gold in. Uh, uh, in the Olympics, that was a female, uh, on uh, the female contender, and she was also. <laughs> I watched her. I was. I don't get Greco uh, wrestling, because mm-hmm. I watched it once, and I didn't get the points. Uh, the the points on it and how how they do the wrestling and everything like that because it's just. I was like, this is. This is just a porno without any penetration. Yeah. I mean, it really was. If, if someone can actually tell me how wrestling is supposed to do it and everything like that. I mean, not not like entertainment wrestling, but... Like actual wrestling. Actual wrestling, how it's supposed to work out and everything. Because it's just, I was like, I, I, I've seen this, but I've seen penetration too on this. <laughs> It's twist his dick. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, the oh, the old dick twist. Yeah, twist his dick. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> um, you know, yeah, we were on our way back from the job site today. We were talking about what happened in the past week in sports. Um, well, we what, all- baseball wise, uh, something pretty historic. Uh, Miguel Cabrera joined the 500 home run club. Um, he hit his fifth, fifth, five hundredth home run this o- over the weekend. He is only the twenty eighth player in Major League history to have accomplished this feat. Um, obviously, according to BaseballReference.com, Barry Bonds is at the top of the list at, with seven hundred and sixty two. <coughs> um, I, I'm, yeah, I, 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 yes, you need the skill in order to hit the ball, but. If you look at Barry Bonds, and this is my shot, I'm calling, uh, you know, this is my shot that I'm calling on Barry Bonds. I don't give a f- flying fuck what anybody says. Oh, Barry Bonds belongs in the Hall of Fame. Bullshit. Okay. The dude came out his rookie year. Guy looked like your average ball player at best, maybe a little on the skinny side, right? You know, the guy could rake. I mean, he could hit. That's, you know, that 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 we knew. Didn't he get into roids? Yeah, he, he was at kind of the epicenter of that whole steroid scandal. I mean, the dude juiced up and started hitting balls for 500 feet, you know. And was, it, was it like going into the locker room and seeing a person take the back of the scene like three or four times? <laughs> yeah, especially <laughs> post-workout. Yeah. Um, Hey, it, it was funny because during his home run race when he was chasing Hank Aaron, who, for me, legitimately sits at the top of the home run list at 755. I have to take your word for it because I have no understanding of sports. Well, okay. So, but there was a uh, – they were playing at the old ballpark in Arlington, right? Uh, before they opened up Globe Life, uh, Globe Life Park, it was the, it was the Rain, Rangers Stadium. Right there in the Arlington. First one. Yeah, the very first one. Before uh, yeah. the people of Arlington actually pay for the new stadium. Yeah, yeah, they're still paying for that new stadium. Well, I say new stadium. They're still paying for that 20-something-year-old stadium that looks perfectly good. 
there was absolutely no reason to go get a freaking brand new stadium. I mean, they they could have engineered a way to put a retractable roof over the existing stadium and been just fine. But I digress. So, anyway, so out there in right field, some Texas fans had taken it upon themselves to bring a banner to hang from the railing. And it said, Babe Ruth did it with hot dogs and beer. What about you, Barry? Oh. Yeah. That, that's actually a good one. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, okay, yeah, get after his ass. And probably the time frame, he probably did it with cocaine, too. Legally. Yeah. No, no, actually, he didn't. He did it with beer, hot dogs, and cigars. Okay. Which ultimately led to his death, because he did die of, I think it was throat cancer. But, um, uh, I mean, for me, it's Hank Aaron, Babe Ruth. A-Rod comes in at fourth at 696, but he was part of that steroids era, too. He's never going to see the Hall of Fame, ever. I mean, the guy spent more time in the locker room with a needle hanging out of his hip than he did on, you know, than he did doing anything else. Could you imagine if they forgot the uh, needle? <laughs> and he well, was like, "Oh, I think uh, a Rod has to take that needle out, out of, of all his the active leg. players that that have joined, you know, the the 500 home run club. Albert Pujols is sitting there at, at currently in fifth with 662 home runs. He's still playing, and he's still able to hit the ball a mile." I mean, the guy is just a machine, and I, I, I respect the hell out of Albert Pujols because you know that, I mean, this guy, I mean, he's constantly getting tested, constantly, because, I mean, the dude is massive, right? He's always in the gym. He's always in the batting cages. Now, granted, the guy is slow as sin because, I mean, he's, he's, he's getting old. I mean, he's, he started playing back in 2001, and that was his first season. Um and he's still currently playing, but like I said, he plays for the Dodgers. Um, but it, I, I would like to see him hit uh, 700. Now, do I think that he's realistically going to be able to do that? No, because right now he's still like 38 from from that from that plateau. So that mean, at, at best, he he wouldn't have to have an All Star worthy season next year. I mean, there's no way that he's going to hit it this year. Just put that out of our minds and just call it a day. Um, and then it's Jim Tomey. Uh He played for Cleveland, Philadelphia, uh, the, the White Sox, the Dodgers, and the Twins. Um, he's sitting at 612. He retired back in 2012. Um, Willie Mays, say hey, kid, right? Uh-huh. Uh, played for both the New York and the San Francisco Giants and the New York Mets. Um He's sitting at 660. My all-time favorite player, hands down, King, King Griffey Jr., sitting at uh, 630. Sammy Sosa, he's sitting at 609, but he's part of that steroids era as well. Uh, there was a summer where uh, they were chasing uh, Roger Maris's record of the most home runs in a single season. Him and Mark McGuire were doing it. And uh, it, it, it was entertaining. But, I mean, everybody knew that either the ball was juiced or the players were. Or maybe a combination of, the bo- of, of both. Now, when they say that the player, you know, that the ball is being juiced, uh, y- you, can, you can doctor a baseball to travel further by putting it in uh, kind of like a shaker or you can, like, vibrate the ball to where it, it kind of livens up the core a little bit. Um, it, there's, there's still all kinds of, you know, whenever home runs are going off the charts, there's there's always those rumors. You always see those comments online talking about how the ball is juiced, and it, it, a lot of it is the progression of the game. Now we're into this launch angle era, but Miguel Cabrera is out there. I mean, he's doing it the right way, and I mean, this guy he's been playing since 2003, and he broke into the big leagues with the Florida Marlins, uh, and that was the year that the Florida Marlins beat the New York Yankees in the World Series. Um, you know, behind the pitching arm of uh, Josh Beckett, but um, but Miguel Cabrera, he's he's been he's he played for Florida, and then he he got traded to uh, Detroit, and he's he's been there just kind of quietly raking, you know, just kind of quietly building his numbers up. I mean, the guy's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. That's I mean, there's absolutely no doubt about it. But um, you know, I I think that at the end of the day. 
you know, we're going to see, you know, we're, home run production is going to be kind of like, it's going to ebb and flow like the tide a little bit. Um, some some years the home run productions are going to be up, and I mean the other other years, I mean pitching is going to catch up with it, and you're going to see the number of strikeouts going up. Um, just like this year, I mean there's been eight no hitters in the big league so far, and so I mean it's it's just one of those freak occurrences. I mean it's it's not it's it's not. I mean it's it's not indicative of of a trend one way or the other. I think, but uh, I mean. It's still entertaining to watch. It's still baseball at its purest core. Yeah. Um, you know, Ken Rosenthal said that, you know, I mean, he was among one of the many people, many, many people that said um, that uh, the era of the no-hitter is, uh, is over after they, they started cracking down on sticky, uh, sticky substances with pitchers. And then, you know, that one kid goes out there in his major league start, you know, debut, and he throws a no-hitter. I mean, just hours after that tweet. So it, it's just pitchers figuring out something and then, um, you know, and then batters come around. I mean, th- these are professional players. I mean, they're going to make adjustments a lot of times with, in the, you know, from game to game, sometimes inside the game. And from, and in and, and, and a lot of instances, you'll see hitters make adjustments in, you know, during that at bat. But, um, uh, I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, I've I've kind of I've always liked Miguel Cabrera. He's 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 one of those very engaging personalities of the game. Uh, there's been videos that have gone around where like he's he's chirping back and forth with little kids that are in the stands, you know. And like one kid uh, was giving Miguel Cabrera a hard time, and uh, Cabrera was giving the kid a hard time about not wearing the right jersey i mean the kid was wearing the op- the opposing team's jersey right mm-hmm. so this kid goes and he finds a miguel cabrera jersey and he like gets Magre- uh, cabrera's attention and so cabrera goes over there you know at the at the end of the game and gives the kid a pair of batting gloves oh cool you know so i mean it, it's stuff like that i mean albert pojols is the same way there's a video of him from last year when he was playing with the angels uh one of his biggest fans uh was at was in anaheim watching a game and uh uh, Pulhos was playing first base, so and, the, and, the, and this kid's got Down syndrome, mm-hmm. so they get they get Pulhos's attention. He comes over to the to the uh, to the rail where the seats are, and uh, he takes his jersey off and he signs the jersey, hands it to the kid, so he gets a, you know, an autographed game worn uniform, right? Oh yeah. And then the kid turns around and he signs the signs the jersey that the kid had on. I mean, to me, that's what it's about. That's, I mean, that that that's what makes this game special. Yeah, it's all about the the it's full a, it, heart of some of these players. Exactly. You know, and and some of the, you know sometimes. I mean, you even see people like Aaron Judge doing it. As much as I don't like Aaron Judge because he plays for the Yankees, you'll see players play catch during the pregame warmups with fans in the stand, in the stands. And it's just to me that's just kind of cool because you know, I mean they're just they're just they're just whipping the ball back and forth. They're just they're just having a game of catch, but they're having a game of catch with a big league ball player. Yeah. You know, I mean, and and that makes the entire experience for that particular that particular fan, that particular kid. Yeah, because you don't that really much more rich. you really don't see that much in the biggest uh, what's considered the biggest sport is the NFL and uh, basketball all too much. I mean, you see it a lot with even just uh, sports entertainment with WWE. I mean, there was a point in time to where uh, Triple H, he was being all mean and everything, and a kid right behind him was crying and everything. He broke character and confronted the kid. The kid got, like, a a showboat for uh, being worried and everything like that, and he got tucking around in the back and everything. Everybody signed. I mean, there's even one that uh, a person, uh, a little kid that battled cancer was, uh, like, it was more, it it was in the front row row and everything like that, but John Cena and Sting went up to the kid and everything, signed their stuff, and gave it to him. Yeah, yeah. And and they literally, I mean, you can hear him, it's like, man, I'm never going to be as strong as you. 
Because, I mean, kid battled cancer and won. Yeah. I mean, that, Kick that ass, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, these are these are grown men. And you see a lot of these, like, Make-A-Wish patients. Uh, you you know, got goosebumps I, off that one, too. Uh, yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you, I mean, you, you see a lot of these Make-A-Wish kids becoming friends with the people that they wished for. You know, or that, you know, that they wanted to meet and greet. Or that they just, their stories kind of become known. And athletes from these different professions, you know, these pr- different organizations kind of gather around these kids. And if I'm not in on, on the, on the theme of wrestling, you said that, you know, there was a kid, I forget his name. Um, you watch wrestling a whole lot more than I do, but I, I can't remember that. Um, it, 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 he, he was basically backstage all the time and all of the wrestlers just like fell in love with this kid. And then the kid, he, he, Lost his battle with cancer. And then when the family got that news out, I mean, you saw grown-ass athletes. I mean, these, like, bulked-up, you know, athletes just crying, like, broke down crying backstage. And th- that prompted, like, an imp- like a, like a, an impromptu kind of a tribute during that one particular episode. I think it was on Raw, if I'm not mistaken. It probably was. Yeah, but... I mean, it's stuff like that, you know, it's where sports, sports transcends uh, so many things, and, it, and it's such a unifier. It's also very divisive, but it's, it's a unifier for the most part. Connor McKillick. Yeah. Yeah, so, but, and that's the thing about sports, regardless of what sport it is, I mean. Oh, dude, he was in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. They put him in the Hall of Fame. But... I mean, you, you you look at sports as a whole, and it's like you you see a lot of people that are like, oh well, sports is just something that people were that who weren't smart enough to graduate college do, and it's like no, no, because a lot of times, and actually a majority of the time, the the, the people that are playing these sports they are very 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 intelligent. I mean, they're, they're I mean they're they're just absolute for the most part specimens of the human race. Yeah, I watched I watched a episode of uh, the Bearded Butcher, mm-hmm. and well, it was kind of a double thing because uh, uh, Brock Lesnar, uh, he 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 cuts his own meat, yeah, <coughs> because he was a a, a farmer. Or his, his well, yeah, that that and Brock Lesnar's got diverticulitis just like I do, and so he has to be very particular about the types of meat that he eats. Because it does affect your gastric, you know, your your yeah. your, your GI tract. Well, it, and just watching them and ask questions and everything of how how to cut the meat and everything. Builder Butchers, uh, they're they're big on YouTube right now, and they show you how to cut meat. Yeah. It. Uh, it <laughs> I don't know why, but the most mundane stuff. You find on YouTube, you find watching for about hours. Yeah. Because one, there, there's usually a lot of it. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll watch like stuff that that uh, people are, like cleaning rugs. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, I was like, huh, it's just fascinating stuff. But he's he he seems like a really intelligent person and everything. Yeah. Um, kind of wrap baseball up here a little bit. Just going to kind of throw some stats out here. Uh, currently, the league leaders uh, batting title right now, uh, Trey Turner of the the Dodgers. He's leading the National League with uh, a 323 batting average. Shohei Otani is leading the majors with 40 home runs. And let's see here, uh, RBIs uh, is Jose Abreu from the Chicago White Sox with 92 RBIs. Starling Marte uh, playing for the uh, Athletics right now from Oakland. Uh, he's leading the stolen bases category with 39. And Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is leading the world right now with runs scored. Now, when they were, there's a difference between RBIs and runs scored. RBIs are runs batted in, so that's the number of people that you've driven across the plate. Versus runs, which is the number of times you personally have crossed the plate. He has done it 93 times so far this year. Damn. So... Um, yeah, we're we're in the home stretch. I mean, this it's September's right around the corner. Like literally, it's going to Who, be next Who's going to be in the playoffs? Uh, you know, I mean, that's 
It's still up at a. It's still up in the air. I mean, there's a there's a few races that are just going to be just like out and out, just. But Pittsburgh still number one. <laughs> no. Boston's been kind of stinking up the joint here as of late. They went on kind of a, a losing streak. Um, they they were in first place by uh, in the American League American League East. They are now in third with a uh, 563 uh, average, 71 and 55. So they're six and a half games back of Tampa Bay, who's leading that division. Um, so right now, uh, Chicago White Sox they're leading their Central Division by nine game nine game lead. Um, Houston, they're leading the American League West. Uh, they've got a four-game lead over Oakland. Uh, in the National League, you've got Atlanta leading the Eastern Division by four and a half games over Philadelphia. In the uh, National League, in the NL Central, Mil- uh, Milwaukee's got a seven and a half game lead over uh, Cincinnati. Well, what I got right now, because I just Let pulled me it up. Finish. Okay, fine. Jeez, <sighs> Maria, that's a shot. Anyway. <laughs> uh, in the NL West, you've got San Francisco with a two and a half game lead over the Dodgers, which is very surprising considering that the Dodgers have the biggest payroll in baseball right now. Um, How did that happen? Uh, you know what? It's just because uh, you don't really hear anything from the Dodgers. Well, no, the, the Dodgers are making all kinds of noise because I mean they they went out and made some heavy moves at the trade deadline, uh, but. While San Francisco's playing pretty decent, pretty solid, sound baseball right now, they've got – that's another shot. Um, that wasn't by my mistake. I was just no, no. I mean, she was the one that came up with those terms, so I'm just like, yeah. all right. But if you're driving, don't drink and drive. Don't drive and drink. Don't be stupid. Drink water. Stay hydrated. Beat the heat. That's what she's saying, that she's yeah. going to drink water. So as far as the, uh, the wild card races are concerned, right now um, – don't drink too much water. In the American I'm League, it is Boston and New York, which is going to be kind of funny because if it if it pans out that way, where if Tampa Bay wins the division and New York and Chicago and, and Boston have to play that one game wild card play in game, expect a game seven type atmosphere. I mean, which it is in all in essence because it's a winner go home. Okay, but just. Due to the fact that New York went out and made all these heavy moves at the trade deadline, Boston pretty much did jack squat. Now, they've picked up a couple of key personnel along the way since the trade deadline. Chris Sale has come back off the injured reserve list from his Tommy John surgery two years ago. Well, say a year and a half ago. Um, They just got Travis Shaw back from Milwaukee. They picked him up on waivers. Um, Travis Shaw did play in Boston before. Uh, He... Uh, was traded to Milwaukee, and then now we've gotten back. And he's already paying dividends because yesterday they were playing the Rangers in extra innings. Uh, bases were loaded. He hits a walk-off grand slam against the Rangers yesterday, so that was that was pretty exciting for me. Um, but uh, over in the National League, let me see here. Let me scroll down. Uh, right now, it's the Dodgers and the uh, the Reds who are. Occupying the two wild card spots uh, for the, for the National League, but uh, San Diego's right on Cincinnati's heels. I mean, they are literally a game back as of today. Um, I mean, it's still pretty tight. I mean, it's it's a four and a half game uh, deficit for St. Louis. Uh, Philadelphia's five games back. The Mets are seven games out from the second wild card spot. Um, you know, I mean, obviously. There's going to be some teams that are just absolutely, and we're not saying this word yet. Wait till we get about after the first week of September. You're going to start hearing terms like the magic number or mathematically eliminated. Um, now, when they talk about the magic number, we're, they're talking about number of, number of games that you have to win in order to clinch a either playoff berth or your division. Okay, and it's if 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 like say for example, let's just say Tampa Bay has like a magic number of five. That means they've got five games that they have to win in order to clinch the division, right? It doesn't matter what anybody else does. If as long as they win, that number shrinks because the teams that are behind them don't have have one less game to make up that difference, right? 
versus mathematically eliminated. So I'm just going to go out on a limb. I'm calling my shot. Arizona not making the playoffs right now. They're at 42 and 84. Yeah, the big one is San Francisco, uh, San Francisco Giant. Yeah. Yeah, San Francisco. And they're leading Dodgers. their division right now. And they're, so. they're, there's a lot of people. I'm reading up on all this stuff right now, but they're saying that the Blue Jays and the Yankees are uh, might make the playoffs and everything. Don't count them out. Mm. Toronto's four and a half games back from the second wild card spot that Boston currently holds. Yeah. Now and Boston's saying, going. They're 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 playing Minnesota tonight. Minnesota is playing just absolutely dreadful baseball right now. I don't uh, know. They're st- they're in fourth place. The Brewers? No. The Twins. Oh, Milwaukee. God damn. Milwaukee Brewers. They're National League. Come on. These these are the jokes, people. Let's go. Okay. Um. Now, I mean, because I get my sports. The Twins play in the American League Central Division. That's a five team, five team division. Okay. They are sitting 17 games back. Okay, right now they're at 54 and 70. They are playing 435 baseball. They're not even playing 500 level ball, which is the same number of wins and losses. Okay, so right now, it, I mean, they, they're looking at a negative 90 run differential. The only team, there's two teams that are worse than, than they are in the American League right now it's Texas. With a 43 and 81 record right now, they're playing 347 baseball. So I mean, they they've got a worse record. They've got a negative 148 run differential, which means they give up 148 runs for every and you know every run that they get, kind of a deal, right? Um, but how did they beat the Red Sox that one time when we went to the state? No, did they? Yeah, the Red Sox lost that game that we went to. You you remember today when I was at work that I said that the broken clock is right twice a day? Okay, baseball. Just like any other sport, okay, you hear this term any given Sunday when you're talking about football. Yeah. Ga- baseball is a game designed around failure. I mean, even the superstars go up to bat at, you know, ten times, and they'll fail seven out of ten times. It's those three at-bats that they get where they get on base that gets them that 300 batting average. Okay. Okay. So, right now, it... it <sighs> And I can't believe I'm about to make this kind of a you know this 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 kind of a statement here. But at the beginning of the season, all of the pundits, all of the experts, and even the front office from the Boston Red Sox said that this is going to be a rebuilding year. Okay. For whatever reason, the chemistry that was in the locker room just kind of translated to you know wins out on the baseball field, and that's why Boston was in the first place for so long this year. The pitching. And it's horrible, horrible quality. Is finally caught up with them. Okay, they're give. I mean, the, the Boston right now that they've got like a fifty uh, plus fifty three run uh, run differential. Okay, so I mean they're scoring more runs per game than the Yankees are, but the Yankees are playing. You know, they're winning those close ball games. Yesterday, for example, Boston was winning. Three to one going into the ninth inning. All Matt Barnes, our quote unquote closer, all he had to do was get three outs. That's all he had to do. But instead, no. What does he do? He drags his gas can out to the fucking hump and he gets and he blows a save by allowing Texas to to tie the game, sending it to sending it to the bottom of the ninth. And obviously the Red Sox couldn't put a run over. And that's why it took 11 innings to beat the Texas Rangers yesterday. But it's just, I mean, just pitching is just, you need good pitching. Because if your pitching sucks and your and your, and your pitchers get just hammered, I mean, you could, you could still record outs. But if they're what they call loud, quote, quote, unquote, loud outs, which means, I mean, they're just they're knocking the shit out of the ball and they're hitting it deep into the outfield or players are able to barrel up on the ball and you're getting an exit velocity off the bat at 100 plus miles an hour. It could be a ground ball. But if you're if that ball's coming off the bat at 117 miles an hour, your pitcher's not doing something. He's not he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah. You got these pitchers that love to pitch to contact, which they induce ground balls or they induce fly balls or whatever. Right. 
but there there's there seems to have been a it, the art of the strikeout seems to have been kind of put on the back burner pitching coaches and managers love to see pitchers pitch the contact they want to see the ball put into play and make the defense behind the pitcher do the do do the work right because that's where all the money is you pay money you play pay play play pay players for not only their offense but you you pay them for the leather that they can flash with the defense right i mean that's where all these gold gloves got you know go all these glow glo- uh, golden glove awards come come from Rawlings at the end of the year they pick one position player from each league you know or posi- you know a player from each position I mean, it doesn't matter it's like from each each of the teams from every league right or from both leagues rather and they'll hand out nine gold glove awards and it's every defensive player or every position every defensive position gets one one award per league right so the American League gets nine gold gloves handed out than the American League or American League and National League each nine nine apiece, right? And that's your def- that's your best defensive player in that position, right? But you need good pitching. You need good pitching. You need good solid defense, and you need an offense that knows how to. You know, I mean, they need to have strike zone discipline. So, I mean, don't be swinging for shit that's down around your fucking feet, and don't be swinging at shit that's above the damn strike zone, and do not swing at stuff that's outside the plate. Because all you're encouraging these shitty ass, you know, these shitty umpires to do is to expand that strike zone. If you're going to go fishing at it, they're, they're going to call it a strike. I mean, it's bad enough that they're, I mean, they're missing calls like crazy. I mean, just the quality of the officiating this year has been horrid, and that is that is mildly putting it. it it's it's been lackluster at best. I mean, there's a few shining examples of like calls that were gotten right but it just kind of seems like since we've introduced in instant replay or these challenges into ba- you know major league baseball umpires are they getting lazy yeah they're getting lazy and then you got people like angel hernandez who have absolutely no business umpiring a, a major league game i mean i i think he leads the universe in bad calls and calls that have been overturned and when he's behind the plate calling balls and strikes you can forget about it and if he decides that he wants to take a pitch off and you throw that shit down the middle he'll call it a ball angel hernandez has got no business in being you know being in baseball he when when he you think he's being paid off no i think at this point he's just being a crusty old fart because it's he, pretty bad whether you actually know the umpires. Today. When yeah, I mean, when people, I mean, players, when they see that he's behind the plate, they know that they're in for a long day. They really do. And if he's anywhere on the field, that 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 spot on the field, may the odds be ever in your favor, because this guy, <laughs> I mean, I cannot state it enough. This dude needs to be fired, because. Umpires, just like in the NFL, with the referees, they they get they get graded by the uh, teams. No, they they don't get graded by the teams. They get uh, you know they get graded. You know their 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 opportunity to referee or to umpire in the postseason is based solely on their regular season performance. So they get a rating: good calls versus blown calls versus calls over overturned right Angel Hernandez has been left out of the last three postseasons because he's that terrible right last seat last year he uh he sued Major League Baseball stating that the reason why he was being left out of the postseason is because of uh, racial discrimination because he's Hispanic that lawsuit got tossed out quick. I mean, it went in front of the judge, and the judge was like, get the fuck out of here. I mean, like, literally, I think it would have been great if the umpire, if the judge would have stood up behind his bench and would have been like, you're gone. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, that would be hilarious. Gave that strike three call, or at least told him, it's like, hey, you know, 
tossed him out of the courtroom. You know, it's like, hey, hey you know this sign, right? Like that? Get out of here. Um, uh, God, they, um, I'm looking at, because I was curious, because they have a NFL referee stats. Yeah, it's, it's, um, <laughs> that's that's going way in the deep end where I, oh man yeah dude i mean it's it's crazy because i mean it, the the game should never be about the officiating crew ever but some officials and it doesn't matter what sport it is some officials just absolutely cannot stand being overshadowed by the players who are being paid to play the game and they have to, and these umpires, referees. Is there only 17 refs for NFL? Yeah, I mean, they've got like a limited number. Well, no. No. Because I think what every crew has got like, no, that, that number can't be right. Because you're going to have inactive, uh, you're going to have inactive re- referees, line line judges, and stuff like that versus the active crews. But they're, they've got crews that, because you've got like, what, 30 Thirty teams, so that you're at the at, at uh, you're playing fourteen, fifteen games a weekend. I don't know because I, I, I would you know, and then, I and then on say, top of I, that, I, I would have on to top say of that, that correct. On top of that, they <laughs> they've got a crew that rotates in and out to the head office in New York City because that's where all the instant replays go. Now, uh, what I'm looking at right now is the 2020 NFL re- ref stats used event uh the season stats when using your daily nfl fantasy lineup i think i think this is the top like 17 or something like that but anyways god i know there's people out there that actually go like super heavy in their fantasy teams to where they're like who's the ref doing yeah that? and who's doing and it's this? sad because that's a factor now you know, and it's, I, it's have, I bet it was always a factor, but and now and, it's and, like and whenever, line factor. Exactly, yeah. I mean, dudes get into it because, especially with like fantasy baseball, which it is the hardest fantasy sport to manage because you have so many games, so many different players, and I mean, it's not like fantasy football where you've got a defensive squad and then you got your offensive people, right? Where you pick? Yeah, because they only play like three days a week. Yeah, well, with baseball, you're playing every day. And yeah, you got, I mean, that's another, a part-time job. That's another reason why I couldn't get into, like, baseball. I can't really get into sports all too much, only because the basic fact of, I mean, yes, if I want to uh, see the team, well, now that Amazon, you can watch all the stuff for free, but. Well, just the Thursday night games, I think. Maybe. Yeah, anyways. But uh, off of that. Anyway, so, yeah, moving on. Um, But, yeah, if the playoffs were to start today, I mean, you're looking at Tampa Bay, Chicago White Sox, and Houston kind of basically getting, like, an extended rest because uh, the the wild card game between New York and Boston would get played, and then the winner of that game would go on to play the number one seed in the American League, which right now would be Tampa Bay. So... And then, uh, and then you would see Chicago and Houston squaring off in their divisional round. So you've got your wild card game, you've got your divisional round, then you've got your league series, and then you go to the World Series. But uh, it, it, they're talking about. I mean, there was even rumors of like expanding the playoffs, and I'm just like, well, don't water it down. I mean, really, just don't water it down because for the longest time there was two divisions. I think that's more or less a, a cash grab to... It uh, is. Uh, it is. Because it, it's slowly going on the decline, really. Well, I, I mean, if you if you look at it, if you look at it, it was, uh, um, like, with with the Field of Dreams game. That was, uh, what, was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah. It was the highest rated regular season game in 16 years. Only a million people watched that game. I mean, it was the highest rated regular season game in 16 years. God. I I saw an article that was titled that says Major League Baseball needs Iowa. 
Oh yeah, and they do. Um, the 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 Reds and the Cubs are supposed to play that game next year, um, and you know, I mean, there's players that they know that they're going to be on that team next year. Uh, I mean, they're they're already getting excited for it. I mean, they're like, we can we're going to get to play in that field, and it, I'll, it, a lot of major league players, almost to a man, will be like. Ask them what their favorite, you know, their favorite baseball movies are, and you're gonna hear, you know, you can hear a lot of standards. You're gonna hear The Sandlot. You're Bull gonna Durham. hear. It will be out Bull Durham. You're gonna see, uh, you're gonna see things, uh, hear things like, uh, For Love of the Game, but on Major that league. list, yeah, Major League is a, is another big one, but on that list, almost, a uh, good high percentage of players are gonna tell you that Field of Dreams is their favorite baseball movie. And I, you know, I've, I've seen that movie too, and that, that's still a tear jerky for me. It is. I mean, tear jerker, it, jerky. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I was talking with my dad about that farmhouse being rentable for the weekend, and he was like, "Well, how much is it?" I said, "It's twenty three hundred bucks." But you get the whole house, you get the the original field, and I mean, you get to turn the lights on at night, and, and he's like, "That would almost be worth it." just to go out and play a game of catch. I was oh, like, yeah. you bet your ass it would. I said, because if I had 2300 bucks burning a hole in my pocket right now, that's exactly where I would go. I'd be like, hey, no, we're we're going to go spend a weekend in, up in Dyersville, Iowa. I'd help you pay for it, too. It's like... It, it's, it's not even it's not even the basic fact of... it. It's something that... Basically, it's like a whole thing that you get a group of friends and go, hey... This is how much it is. So and so and so and so is going with us. We're all pitching in. We're going to just toss our money in and we're going to go to this. Right. And it, I mean, how many people could probably live, uh, stay in that house? Probably about yeah, two I, families? I, no. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's a four bedroom house because I know it's two stories. Hmm. So about three families. And the, fa- God, I would. I'd sleep on the couch. I don't care. <laughs> Anyways, going off of baseball, we got NFL news. This is the only news I've uh, found right now. Johnny's probably going to look up other stuff. The Jaguars were pl- uh, place rookie R. Uh, what is that RB? What's the RB? Running back. Running back. Uh, Travis. I can't pronounce his last name. Yeah, I saw this story earlier today because I've got the NFL app on my phone. So, um, okay, and I, I would be remiss. Next week on the sports show, the jersey that I'm going to wear is Tim Tebow's Jacksonville Jaguar jersey. Oh, did you finally get it? Yeah, it came in. Okay. Now, yes, I ordered the jersey because we talked about it. He's the number one selling jersey yeah. on NFL.com. Yeah. I finally managed to score one. And the Jaguars cut him, right? And that's that was one of the biggest reasons why I was looking forward to going to this game this this coming Sunday down in Dallas to to watch the Cowboys play the Jaguars because I want to see Tim Tebow play. And I'm like, ain't that a pain in the ass? But you know what? I don't care. I'm standing firm, and I'm going to wear my Tim Tebow jersey to AT and T Stadium anyway. I don't care. I just don't care. I, my, my ability to give a fuck died years ago with the drought okay so you know sir lt you see you see that way off in the distance that was the direction i gave my last fuck well but, I, I i turned my fucks into a candle and i started burning it so ooh, it's on fire <laughs> yeah i saw a balloon once that spelled out the word fuck and i was like oh look at that a flying fuck alas it was not mine to give <laughs> but um <clears throat> um but yeah uh running rookie running back travis Etanine, I'm, that's what I'm going with. Um, initially, they were talking about it was a knee injury, but then they they came well, out with more information. They said it was with uh, he's. It's he's, a mid foot sprain that is lisphoranic. Yeah, and it's going to require I, surgery. That is now to end his season per source. Yeah, and that was coming from Adam Schefter at she- uh, Adam Schefter on Twitter, um, and that came out at uh, one twelve this afternoon. I think it's Central Time, so. But uh, he only played 16 offensive snaps in two preseason games. Um, 
Well, he's a rookie, so yeah. I mean, he 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 was one of these products from this this most recent draft. Um, yeah, that that's the thing that I've noticed, and and football's the only thing I somewhat keep up with. Yeah, but I've noticed that a lot of the uh, preseason games you lose uh, like a shit ton of fucking rookies. Yeah, uh, due to injury and everything like that. Well, especially with the last couple of seasons because, the, you know, a lot of these players from college had the opportunity to opt out because of COVID protocols. Yeah. And I think a lot of that hurt some of these players because they didn't get that, that, that game game con, uh, game condition or game speed conditioning. They they Some of them just kind of took the year off. I mean, they yeah, they spent time in the weight room or whatever, but they weren't conditioning their body to play football. Because you, you can go and lift and deadlift and you can do leg squ- you need squats and do whatever. You can bench press. You you can do every exercise you possibly possibly can do in a gym. Lifting heavy things and yelling and screaming and you know recording personal bests and stuff like that. Yeah, there's a big difference between just weightlifting and everything like that and, and, and actually and, training for like a and training for a game. It's 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 like a martial arts. Yeah, uh, I could I could hit a, uh, hit a bag all day long, but until I go and hit like a wooden dummy or something like that or something that has like a little bit of non-give yeah i i will not be able to take a person down i mean yeah. i went from hitting a punching bag for a while to hitting a tree right and it it worked out really good to the point to where uh because of my size and every everything nobody looks at me to the point where <laughs> i can't <laughs> that was funny for those of you who are listening strictly on our audio-only podcast, I'm refilling my glass of tea, and when I opened up the half gallon, it just it squirted on me. Yeah, it did. I was so happy to see it. And uh, for those of you keeping score at home, this is not alcoholic. It is straight tea and sugar, the way God intended. Yeah, but. <laughs> I still, I still like Dear because God, of, that's another shot. I know. No, that's three. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, what we're talking about now? Here, here's a. Uh, okay, let me finish my stuff first, <laughs> and then we'll go into the. Okay. Because I, I thought about the whole whole uh, thing. I'm trying to. I'm trying to stay on point, but I'm because of my size and everything. Everybody thinks because I don't have like physical strength, but right. when it comes to like punching and stuff like that or uh, uh, jujitsu and everything like that. Right. I'm I'm pretty proficient. I mean, you marry a Filipino woman, you have to defend yourself somehow. Okay, so you, you, you're okay, so you're saying you marry a Filipino woman and you have to defend your, okay. How many people, I've, every time that I've actually said it's like who was your? Uh, what kind of person was your ex? Now, was bear like, oh, in mind, Asian women are probably some of the only women in the world that you'll be able to physically see eye to eye on with. I'm not that short. You're not that tall either. You, you're like a cunt hair towards me, man. Seriously? Yeah. I'm five ten. Yeah, I'm six one. Oh, okay, that makes sense then. <laughs> so. <laughs> I thought you said you're like five eleven. Who the no. fuck is five eleven? Someone, t- someone told me that they're five eleven. Well, I mean, six, six foot six one. It just depends on what gas station I'm walking out of. But anyways, <laughs> all right, <laughs> down to the last part. What we're what we're talking about? Any any time we're saying take a shot. Uh, one of our main. Uh, our main listener, uh, Maria, that we keep on talking about constantly throughout our shows because she sends us messages and everything. Today <laughs> today was kind of funny because we said something in another episode on an, uh, one of the other shows, and she laughed so hard that she had to stop, physically stop her ve- oh, I'm sorry, physically stop her vehicle off the road because she could barely breathe because she was laughing that hard. That was classic but anyways i was literally thinking that if we actually do the drinking game thing live that mm-hmm. we were talking about we could do it at the legion hall 
Uh, we could do some kind of uh, – make it a charity event. Or, I don't give a shit. Right. Uh, it, it would basically be more or less everybody having fun and everything like that. And and probably getting to know us and everything, getting to know uh, each other. But we have to come up with the rules right. for it. And the first one she made, it was whenever you say, uh, like, and, and you do do that a lot. But it's it's funny because she 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 hears it and she's like, man, you can you can make that a drinking jam- game. I was like, I'm down for this, and I was like, I could I could probably make him do that a lot. I mean, you do it to yourself too. True. So, uh, that's the drinking game part. Uh, we are also going, uh, whenever you go, dear God. Yeah, dear God. No, and that one doesn't count. But, like, I was, okay, I was so for example, like, like three shots. when, like, it, it, okay, like, when your dyslexia just kicks into high gear. Oh, yeah. And I'm just sitting there, I'm, like, sitting there going... What in the actual fuck did he just say? You know, I, sometimes I just, I, I don't feel like dropping the F-bomb, but I, I just want to sit there and go, oh, dear God. You know, it, it's just those, those, it's those, one of those moments where you just realize what I was trying to talk about. You are like, it, it, uh, most of my actual friends, and me and Johnny, he still, he hasn't got his secret decoder ring for talking for me. Yeah, I haven't drank nearly enough Ovaltine to get that thing sent in yet. Yeah. Anyways, most of my other friends, they do have the secret decoder ring where they speak my language. Where if if you're with, like, me and Kai or me and uh, Jason, he, he's been on the show, too, a couple of times. Right. But they would just look at you going, you didn't get it. Hold on. I'll explain it to you. It's this, 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 this. Uh uh, oh, okay. Yeah, and then it's those moments where I'm just like, what in the actual fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. And then I have to think, bigger picture, the fuck is wrong with me? Because I'm sitting here <laughs> hanging out with you. I'm like, my God, how far have I fallen? I feel like, dare I say it, Lucifer sometimes? Or I'm just like, oh, I was God's favorite one. And then he casts me into hell. <laughs> like... No, it's not that bad. I mean, in all honesty, I mean, David's probably one of the more, I mean, one of the better human beings that I've been, I've come into contact with over the last few years. And I don't know. I think it's just because of the show that we've really kind of just clicked. Yeah. And it was one of those things. It was happy stances that we actually met. Yeah. And it was a good happenstance because I was looking for someone that actually. Uh, I I know that I'm funny, but I'm only funny. I can't do I can't do comedy. I can't go to like a comedy show like that. Yeah, I can't do an open mic. Yeah, no. I can't do an open mic, even though I've tried. I've written down stuff and everything, but I just I just can't do it. And it's, some people are like that. They can't do like open mic stuff. They but they're really funny when it comes with other people. Yeah, my um, my girlfriend's cousin does stand up down in Houston. Which there's a couple of different people, or there's there's one person at least that we're trying to get, we're trying to work through her to get a, an interview set up here. I'm going to ask her about her cousin Royce because I mean he does he does stand up and, and apparently he's pretty damn funny. So um, that might be a subject for like you know kind of one of our what the hells because if I'm I want to say that he played arena football or minor league baseball. I, he used to play. He used to be a professional athlete, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, at, at some point, I mean, never like made it to the show, kind of a thing. But you know, yeah. Any, 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 well, any I know, I he know was paid guy, to play, so I know, I know a guy that when we had that uh, football team here, yeah, that he was a correctional officer, crookie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was talking about it all the time. Uh, him going to the events and everything like that, and doing the. Yeah, I think I met him one night. He's uh, a good guy. He just has a weird. He has a weird speech. It, yeah. His, his, his speech is a little bit weird, but 
he he's a really great guy and everything like that. Great to work with and everything. He shot up. He became a, I think he became a, a major. He's a major right now. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. So working his way up through the ranks. I see him. Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's all I've got for this week. Um, I was kind of actually kind of worried going into this episode because I was like, there was a, well, there. Uh, it, it really wasn't a whole lot news. there. Yeah, it wasn't like all the big jaw news, dropping or anything. Yeah, all the big news is more or less going off of other stuff that we talk about at times. But right yeah, kind of kind of look for. Uh, I mean, with with football ramping up to start their kickoff for the regular season and baseball winding down towards its play towards the playoffs. Um, I mean, it's going to be an interesting, you know, about a month, month and a half, two months. Um, that we're, we're gonna have to learn how to talk football. Yeah, we're gonna. Have, I'm gonna have to learn how to talk football. Um, I mean, I, I can. I can hold my own. Um, I just can't wait till December. I got to talk to my uh, friend, and uh, uh, I got to talk to my brother-in-law and everything. I want to do kind of a live show because we we always go to his house. We watch the Na- Army Navy game. Yeah. Um, I usually hold – now, last year I helped co-host an event over at Buffalo Wild Wings uh, with some members from the American Legion Post. Um, <laughs> my girlfriend, she she got to come up for this year, and she got to kind of experience that really for, like, the first time. Um, so that was fun. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's something that we can do. We might even be able to talk to – you know, Buffalo Wild Wings and I see. I do not want to do it there. It's always packed when you do stuff like that. Well, no, because when we did that, we did it right there in the, like, in the garage part of it. Yeah. And we basically had that whole side of the restaurant to ourselves. Okay. So we can we can try to talk to them, see if they'd be willing to let us kind of set up there. Um, well, the main reason that we do it at the at his house and everything is because we, we know we have – if I get a little bit blitz, but I don't, I don't drink that much anymore. But if you know, what, I don't either. I mean, don't I get me wrong. I can stand the headaches. <sighs> I'll do the dr- drinking game and everything like that, but I'll, I'll try to lighten the load. I mean, even Marie was like, I'm probably not going to drink that much, anyways. You know, really? Because I mean, all she does is talk shit about how much she can drink. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's one of those things. Is I'll just it, that's through. happening. Okay. Just Rolling. called her out. Just called her out. Be like, oh, well, I'm kind of a lightweight now. Look, look, no, no, no. Put your ego aside. Check it at the door. Or if you want, bring your damn ego with you. I don't care. Uh, and we'll make sure that we have like uh, the entertainment value might be a little bit higher if she brings her ego. Yeah, we'll make sure we get lists and everything. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Ubers or Lyfts? Ubers. Oh, my God, it's so much Uber. <laughs> like, no, go away. <laughs> it's it's so funny. The beginning of the, the Internet and everything like that, everybody told you it's like, stop meeting up with strangers, and now we're That's all we do. We call yeah, strangers yeah. to our house to give us give us rides. Yeah, our it's food. like. You know what's really sad, though? I've only seen, like, a couple of articles where a person died. Because yeah. the Uber driver, the uh ended up killing somebody you know and it's funny because when you think about some of the other things that we were told as kids that ended up being lies you know like you know don't don't talk to strangers don't get into cars with strangers well one of my favorite lies that we tell kids nowadays is we don't lick other people Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> it's my favorite <laughs> They, remember that whole Adam thing that uh, John Wash? Yeah. They, he, he became famous but only because he did uh, uh, America's Most Wanted and everything mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. But because of that t- uh, made-for-TV movie, my mom almost tattooed the addre- physical address that we were staying at right there on my body when I was eight. Okay. Because of the sister. sensitive nature of that particular subject, I'm, I'm not going to. That's a little. That's a little insane. Uh, 
I mean, I get the premise behind it. No, that that's nothing. Okay, yeah, it's it's kind of not sensitive nature to me because I lived it. And I, well, started, I was just talking it, about the fact that it's your mom. Yeah. So no, yeah. It, it, it's one of those things. I'm 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 over that subject. And yes, I loved her. I care for her. I wish she was still here. Yeah. But no, I literally saw her trimming a leaf and stepping on it while on it up in a tree. See, that's just a recipe for a good time. Actually, it was a recipe to go to the hospital because <laughs> she broke her fucking ankle. Again. <laughs> Good times, right? I mean, it just the, 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 the fact that she broke her ankle is a direct re, direct result of her inability to perform a proper parachute landing fall. That is true. And on that note, we're going to wrap up this week's episode of Nerd Sports. Remember, if you get a he or she boner that lasts for more than four hours because of the dulcet tones of our voices, you're welcome. And stay classy, San Diego. I'm David Dickerman. I'm Johnny Skelton. Thank you for watching. Woo! Bye!